Mr. Volko. Uh, Chairman Harley. I am here. Vice Chairman Margiana. Here. Clerk Roberts here. Mr. Hughes. Mr. Leichel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Here. Mr. Homicki. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Allard. Here. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Yes, I'm here. Mr. Silver. Nope. That was not, not correct. We have nine of us. Everybody is seated and participating. Um, before we get started, there were two items that apparently were uh, noticed to be on the agenda tonight, and they are they are not being heard. So if you're here for that, uh, I uh, invite you to, you know, leave if you so care. Um, they are applications 1941, dealing with the self storage facility on the Berlin Turnpike 1881. So if you were expecting to hear that, it's been pulled from the agenda. The other item is application 1942, and this one is the gallery on Church Street. So those two items were noticed and have been pulled from the agenda. So, all right, moving on to the items that are going to be heard tonight. Uh, item 3.1, the 824 review of the five-year capital plan. Town manager going to? Oh. Town engineer. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Derek Reger. I'm the town engineer. I serve as the staff liaison to the Capital Improvements Advisory Committee, uh, which is comprised of um, local residents in town that go through an annual process of uh, identifying our capital improvement projects for the year um, based on what they feel the town's priorities are. This particular year, uh, Mayor Montaneri had suggested that uh, we shoot for a target number of about $900,000 worth of projects with the understanding that that might need to be reduced. Um, so the way this was set up is we had gone through and identified 18 projects that totaled $800,000 in cost. And then we had prioritized an additional uh, four projects beyond that that would bring us to the $900,000 target number and then an additional four if for some reason projects came in under budget or there was additional um, funds available to fund those. Some of these projects are fully funded. Some of these are only partially funded. Um, but I'll go through a, just a brief rundown and summary of the projects that we were looking at for the different categories. Uh, every year we break them into eight major categories. Um, the first in the handout that you have, uh, starting on the second page, is uh, from the Department of Com Community and Economic Development. It's an allocation of $500,000, uh, excuse me, $50,000 uh, for the facade loan program that has been uh, very successful in recent years. Uh, so Peter, I put in a request for that. Uh, and that was their allocation to that. In the drainage category, uh, $30,000 was allocated to uh, stormwater sampling and investigations that's related to DEP's new uh, MS4, a municipal separate storm sewer system permit that the town uh, has to implement uh, new measures, which uh, include some additional stormwater sampling throughout town on an annual basis, as well as a number of other items. So for this first year, this allocation uh, constitutes approximately uh, one quarter of all the sampling we need to do throughout the program that we wanted to get started on so we can start identifying our priority areas as we work through the five-year permit. For the fire safety category, uh, we also had $36,000 allocated. Uh, this is a project to replace the air horns and associated tanks at firehouses one, two, and three. Uh, that was a request from our fire chief. In the pavement maintenance category, uh, we had allocated 25, uh, sorry, excuse me, $75,000 for a project. Um, I don't know if you're aware, we do have a, a situation at the south end of Middletown Avenue not near the Rocky Hill town line. Uh, the town has put up some concrete barriers temporarily. We have some undermining of the road that's going on there related to some drainage issues that are out there. Um, it has started to undermine uh, the existing three cable guide rail that's out there. There are utility poles in this area. So the town has been looking for ways or funds to basically address the safety concern that's out there. So we're looking to reconstruct the embankment, um, which will require some uh, inland wetlands permitting because we are in the floodplain. Um, do some limited drainage improvements, put in some guide rail through that area so to address the safety improvements. Um, you, you may be aware MDC has a very large uh, sewer <coughs> installation project that will be going on in the Mill Street, Middletown Ave area that will go through this project area. So 
we are working with them to try and coordinate having this project done uh, maybe by their contractor while they're mobilized on site because it's very simple. Um, so we have get this all done as part of you know their project when it's done. So we're we're still working on that, but uh, the CIAC did allocate some funds to that, which uh, will help us um, achieve that goal to to get this project done. Their schedule is still being determined, so we anticipate sometime uh, whether it be this construction season or next construction season, we would be able to to do this work. Parks and Recreation, $155,000 was allocated for five different projects. Um, Four of which are at the Pitkin Community Center. Um, some of those projects include asbestos abatement, um, renovating the women's bathroom, um, design construction of a uh, comprehensive renovation at the community center, and, uh, and a renovation of the exterior of the main entrance. It also included $25,000 to replace playground equipment at Greenfield Park. The school buildings category uh, $65,000 was allocated for removal and replacement of carpet and floor tile at Emerson Williams Elementary School, and $30,000 was allocated for replacement of pool equipment at Wethersfield High School. In sidewalks, um, every year, uh, for recent years, the town has been allocating $25,000 to go through uh, areas of town and upgrade our sidewalk ramps to ADA uh, compliance standards. Uh, so we had put in that request again for $25,000 as well as $25,000 for addressing some um, unsafe uh, sidewalk we have along Main Street between uh, Garden Street and Church Street. There's some areas where uh, tree roots have lifted or uh, the, um, just from freeze thaw are being driven over at driveway aprons. The bricks are kind of in an unsafe condition. They've been there for a while, so this money is to allocate addressing those, the worst areas in that section uh, just to improve safety along that stretch of Main Street. For town buildings, uh, there was a recommendation for $410,000 for eight different projects. $165,000 was uh, the largest chunk of that. That's for a mechanical bay lift that's needed at the physical services facility. Um, there's additional funds for window replacements, uh, removal and replacement of the aging heating and cooling system at the physical services facility as well. Uh, in addition to that, the CIAC had uh, some recommendations for using um, some reverse, reserve funds to complete the Cloverdale Pond project. Um, some CIP funds had been allocated. We do have that project uh, has been bid. Uh, we, we are reviewing bids right now. We hope to do that project this coming summer is the intent. Um, CIAC also recommended a lease purchase uh, for work at Catone Field for replacing the, the turf that's out there and has been, uh, it's a little outdated and in, in need of replacement. And also, um, they had suggested uh, using some local bond funds to uh, fund a complete comprehensive renovation of the Pitkin Community Center uh, inside, rather than trying to do a lot of the work piecemeal, just taking a, a big look at the banquet room and some of the other facilities there and addressing it all at once. The total uh, sum of all the requests from staff was a little over $8 million, so the eight hundred dollars to $900,000 allotment that CIAC recommended is obviously it's a very small percentage about 11 percent of the total projects that were requested by staff and that the town is in need of but with the fiscal constraints we have um, the committee has done their best to try and identify the highest priority projects uh, that they're aware of and try and uh, you know guide the town towards addressing those uh, this year if anyone has any questions I'd be happy to answer George yeah uh, what happened? Well, no, I won't go into a general thing like that. Um, the brick sidewalks in Old Weathersfield, I've walked them recently. I don't live there, but I have been down there. I go there, I'm proud of it. Why do you keep fixing those brick sidewalks? And the town has never looked at the sidewalks in front of my house and on my street. You paved the street last year, you did a beautiful job. The damn sidewalks, in fact, I was going to come down to a council meeting, but I didn't want to see, to have him over there not liking me talking about sidewalk program or lack of one in this town. But the only sidewalk program you have is fixing the bricks down in Old Winterfield. What about my street? And, re and you know what I had recently somebody say to me on my street? Rip them out. If you're not going to fix them, you know another thing that goes on? When you have bad sidewalks, and I have one two doors down from me, for example, it's so bad, it's broken up. And it's been that way for the last 10 years. 
I don't think anybody's ever gotten out there and inspected it. And it disturbs me because somebody said rip them out, and they're probably right. And you know what another thing that happens? People don't take care of their own property when they see what's going on outside. Because they think those are town sidewalks, even though they have to pay to have them redone. And in this case, are you going to have the people down in Old Weathersfield and all the property owners pay for this work? No. Well, with regard to the sidewalks on your street, and I think we've talked about this before, you know, now that the weather's here again, we have our sidewalk inspector doing inspections. You do? I've never met him. I had trouble finding him. He actually exists. <laughs> he does. And I, I, I believe we've talked about this, but I, if, if he hasn't been out to your neighborhood yet, I will have him come out there and take a look for it. I don't think he comes out to any neighborhoods except all Weathersfield. Well, we, 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 we do. George. We do, we do have a, a, a well, sidewalk inspection program. Because so. I almost came to a council meeting and talked to these guys, but I, don't, I, have, I have to be here. As far as I'm concerned, I do my work here in PNZ. I don't have to go down to council meetings and talk about this. Well, you have my number, Mr. The Oracle. If you have any, any concerns, you know, contact me. We can address them. The ramps. Now, my wife is handicapped. She can't get out of a wheelchair in a nursing home. So I'm familiar with the handicapped issue. However, I've never believed that those ramps, and I know I guess the federal government requires them, that they run about 250 bucks each to install. You keep putting them in, and there's a cost in here. Is that money coming from a federal source? No. 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 Another issue, why are you doing it? I don't even think, they, do they stop you from falling? I don't think so. But the, different, the difference between the new ramps and a lot of the ramps I'll in town. I'll let the talk. I'm, I'm, I'll calm down, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. Thank, thank you, I George. I had to get that off my chest. Thank you, George. Well, the new, the new ramps are installed to have the ADA, uh, the detectable warning tiles, which are there for people that have they either you know have difficulty walking or are blind to give them that we we are trying to be consistent with what state of connecticut does they have recently come probably through town 80 percent of them i think I, I don't know the number off the top of my head but the town has been funding yeah, that for I a number of years lot. and uh you know i appreciate all that we are known as the handicapped community of the state i understand that as far as uh, sidewalks and all the other handicapped provisions. We started early, we've done a great job in town, but sometimes maybe we go a little bit too far. And there, there's an example of those darn ramps and the cost of them. And that they take a priority here when we don't have any money. <coughs> we don't have any money to pave. So we don't have a road pavement program. You're gonna pave down there in Middletown land? We do have a separate so road, road paving road program, road separate road from our CIP. Paving. We're not gonna do any because you don't have any money coming in from the state level, right? So George, that's that a, it? George, what happens when you get more money? You, you've got a contingency. I don't see anything. G in here. George, is there a question in there? The the federal yeah, government. The, the federal government requires the ADA, and the town needs to get to at some point or other. Well, they, so. do, yeah, they do require. <coughs> that's supposed to finish it. All the other towns are doing them. Yep. They really are. Yep. It's a federal law, and so is the state of Connecticut. All right, and, and, and to your comment regarding the paving program, we do have a separate paving program that is funded separately from our CIP. That is done on an annual basis. Budget, it's not as part of our CIP program, no. That is handled separately. We have a separate paving fund that is allocated strictly for milling and overlay projects. So, how much is it? Uh, typically, we allocate $1.5 million per year. That includes money we get from the state for low SIP funds, which are currently on hold, but we do typically get that every year. It includes money that goes to physical services department for. Uh, permanent pavement repairs, potholes, and it includes our two programs. We usually do spring and then again in late summer, early fall so for are, our milling overlay work. You are doing milling and paving through that operation? That, and, yes. And it does, just doesn't show up in here? It's not part of this program, correct. So, so Derek, I got a couple questions. Um, on the Middletown Avenue project, it looks like you have an estimate of $75 million. <coughs> 75,000, mm -hmm. 50 is above the line and 25 is below the line, so to speak, right? So you've got something that you can call out and get done for 50? We, uh, we are, like I said, we're trying to work, rather than putting this out to bid as a separate project, we're looking to work with the MDC contract. We haven't gotten far enough yet to get some pricing from them, but they were comfortable putting $50,000 towards this, because this is a problem, this has been going, that situation first uh, became apparent back in 2012, I believe. So these Jersey Bears have been up there on the side of the road. I know there are cyclists that go through that area that have called me, concerned about the condition, the narrowness of the road. 
Um, so they had allocated the 50 uh, in the original 800,000, and then if if we could get to the 900, they would like me to see me put another 25 towards it. That is still not as much as I was estimating, but we feel like between MDC and maybe some other funds that are available, we piece together a project at least to try and get that addressed while we have so such large construction going on in that area anyway. All right, thanks. So in the MS4 um, thing, so in my mind, that's not really capital. Um, so it's a, it's a long-term quality monitoring process that, that every governmental agency is going to have to do. How do you expect to deal with that going forward? I see it in successive years in a capital program. Is that really the right answer? Well, you know, we, the, historically you're correct. It has been handled as a, as a capital allocation. The MS4, um, they, there are requirements that the towns need to try and meet. Um, in writing our stormwater uh, management plan that was that's published right now uh, in draft form for deep you know we do stipulate in there like most municipalities we're going to do as much work as we can with the funds that we have available and if so you know at some point we we have to scale back our funds or have to kind of structure our program to meet their requirements but maybe not the full extent you know that's kind of optional um, as far as what we can do right now because this is new this program just takes effect this july and when the early years of the program we want to try and put some funds to it to make sure we can identify the areas we're really going to have issues with depending on the results of the sampling and the studies that we do we may have larger projects that come out of it um, but at this point yes it's been handled just as a as a capital plan it's not included in an operating budget at this point okay because because that's where other entities will eventually will put it is in their operating side of business right yeah. okay. other questions question on your uh, drainage obviously this year you've got 30,000 allocated uh in the capital but next year there's like 1.56 million why the jump is <coughs> to the ms4 the that is primarily related to historical drainage projects that have been projected out um, by my predecessor mike turner as far as what we had for a 10-year plan with the me coming on uh, last year and just the, the schedule we had i have not had a time to fully vet all those projects in the coming years so if you look at the backlog of drainage there's a huge amount of drainage projects i do want to spend some time uh, identifying those that are, are the biggest concern and try and fine-tune those numbers a little bit going forward but that's why this year you know it's a very small allocation generally in drainage it's a fairly small allocation historically but i do want to get a better handle on a 10-year plan and see what we can do to try and address those as we go forward and the other final quick question, the intersection at Church and Main Street of Old Weathersfield, obviously you made that a four-way, it looks really nice, but the paving in that area, is that part of the capital or is that part of the paving program? And is that going to be paved at some point? Yeah, r r right now we're looking at that as part of our paving program. Um, that is identified as an area we will be looking at. It's not on the list for this year is all I can say. Rich? I was wondering whether you had even a remote ballpark estimate of what you thought the complete comprehensive renovation of the community center would be, would cost, considering that just sort of bubbled to the top unexpectedly. I think the, the $25,000 that was um, recommended by the CIAC for that is really to start putting money towards design and renovation. Um, at this point, that design has not been done, so this money would be some seed money to start getting a consultant on board to look at what a comprehensive uh, renovation would be. To be honest with you, I don't, I don't know the number of that offhand, and I don't know if that's been fully vetted yet because we haven't gotten into that level of design. I mean, one of the, one of the problems with having been on this commission for a while and looking at a lot of these is you feel like you just did something. I mean, it's like I just painted my house, you know, but that was 18 years ago. I mean we have had a number of community center renovations over the years and I guess along the same vein didn't we just paint the Standish house and that's already in here again for this year and next is it the back that we didn't paint how long Eight. should look into rhino shoes <laughs> 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 And Catone is the, the the group recommended a separate bond approach to the Catone Field. That's being How old is that? Uh, that's 14, 14 years old. 14 years. Um, so yeah. we have a consultant oh, on board. <laughs> it's new. <laughs> no. Yeah, for, for a turf field, that's re reached the end of its useful life. Um, it's that we've actually gotten a few extra years out of it than uh, really we would have expected. So that is uh, 
currently going out to bid. We're expecting to do that work this summer, and uh, they're going to handle that with a lease option pavement that uh, has been coordinated through the town council. Thank you. I have another question. These are all competitive bid prices. I mean, how does that work for it? Is there a price list where, where it goes to competitive versus three? Um, yeah, there's, there's thresholds that are established by town council as to what requires uh, three verbal quotes, three written quotes, or going out to bid. Um, I, I believe off the top of my head, I believe the number is around 29,000. Anything ex in excess of that does require a bid. Um, if it's less than that, it depends on whether you can do it with three uh, quotes or not. For some of the larger projects, um, we, we typically go to bid. Um, for some of the smaller projects, it may be handled with a quote type of uh, assessment. George? Two more. Uh, what would you say the uh, Cloverdale Pond project was dredging, basically? It's a, uh, it's a combination of dredging the pond. Uh, we're replacing, there's an existing 16-foot concrete spillway that is failing right now. We'll replace the spillway. We're going to replace the spillway as well, um, do some channel improvements on the town property. And as part of that project, we've gone through Army Corps and DEP permitting. Some of the uh, spoils or the sediment that's coming out of the pond has been tested. It's clean. We're going to be using it to build a small berm on the north side of the property which will help um, reduce the flooding limits. Right now, the 100-year the floodplain extends onto some properties immediately to the north. Um, with this work, we're going to try and contain that better on the town property so these, these particular properties see less flooding during the more significant storm events. Have you had discussions with the adjoining property owners? Yes, we had. Last fall, we held a public information meeting. They were invited. We had a number of attendees, and we've kept them uh, up to date on the schedule and, and where we are in the process. I don't live over there, but I know one of the adjoining neighbors will show up here. I know we know who he is. George. Yes. And, uh, he'll, uh, I want to be sure you made him happy. Right I'm doing my best. Uh, can I ask uh, Town Planner this question since it's the one thing he has in here? Uh, the state uh, facade is the state program, or the facade program, a state program? Uh, the facade program is a combination of state and, <coughs> and town funds to small this point. Cities, sure. uh, small town economic assistance, what they call the STEEP program primarily, is the state source. But we have uh, received funding in the capital improvement program for a number of years in the past, smaller amounts. So it's a mix of both of those funds. The, who decides it's half and half? Half uh, owner and half uh, town? Uh, that was the policy established. It, it's a it's a matching program, so we will cover uh, fifty percent of the costs, right. um, up to, or? Up to uh, fifty up to fifty thousand. Oh, did you ever think of two thirds, one third, maybe? The we went through various. Uh, we went with money being, not being readily available uh, from all sources this year. We uh, reevaluated the program last year, and uh, the commission decided to stay with the 50 50 program. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? <coughs> if not, uh, make a motion that we give a positive referral on the 824 review of the five year capital improvement budget uh, with the recommendation that the council fund it not less than nine hundred thousand dollars and also that it although it's not part of the capital budget that the uh, pavement roadway milling and paving program continue to be funded at levels consistent with prior years second okay <clears throat> so let's discuss that i mean uh what are the ramifications if they can't get nine hundred thousand no, that's just that's that's not a we're just it's not a stipulation. No, okay. It's more of a just, comment that, that we've generally done. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, Mr. Chairman, uh, do all the comments we made go back to the council? So for instance, the ones I made at the beginning might be summarized, or might not, might be left out. Sanitized or summarized? Sanitized. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> uh, they they won't be in the, the they won't be in the referral letter. The referral letter is pretty simple. However, they'll be evidenced in the minutes, and if the town manager uh, wants to communicate that, um, certainly that's another option. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Those are maintenance issues. We deal with at the All right. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Very good. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
<clears throat> Next item on the agenda, 4.1, a public hearing for application number 1943-17-Z, Billingsgate Development, LLC. Seeking approval in accordance with section 6.5 for the development of a paper road called Princeton Street and for dedication as a public road. <clears throat> so while you're setting up um, public hearings, the public hearing process works that the applicant will present the project to the, to the commission. The commission will ask questions. When we are done asking questions, we'll open it up for public comment and receive additional feedback in that manner. We will likely have the applicant <clears throat> respond to some of those comments or all of those comments. And then uh, we'll take the process back and continue to ask questions of the applicant. And if we think we have enough information, we will, you know, have a vote on the, on the item. All right? In a nutshell. Okay. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the commission, my name is Mario Borelli. I am here uh, as an attorney representing the applicant, Billingsgate, with reference to the construction of the paper road Princeton Street. Um, for uh, reference, this is uh, a block that is located between Knott and uh, Wilmot Streets, uh, and also between, uh, that's to the north and south, and then Yale and Brown Street as well. Um, this is the second time that this matter has come up before the commission. Previously, we were here in March of 2016, uh, discussing our plan uh, at that time to, uh, to build uh, the paper road out to Princeton Street. The applicant Billingsgate owns these four highlighted interior lots. At the present time, uh, without the existence of uh, Princeton Street, those lots are landlocked. They do not have access to any public uh, highway. Um, and therefore, we are seeking to develop uh, Princeton Street uh, in order to allow access to those interior lots and to allow for their development. Um, this uh, Princeton Street paper road extends back to an original subdivision plan, which was in 1915. Uh, and some of this is recapping uh, what we had previously presented uh, 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 in March of 2016, but I figure with the passage of time, a refresher is in order. Um, this subdivision plan uh, included the existing streets Brown and Yale, which are those cross streets, and created a number of blocks in that area. Um, the paper road, for whatever reason, was never developed uh, and uh, created as uh, a public road, um, and in seeking to create access to those interior lots after discussion with the town uh, planning department, uh, it was determined that uh, the best course of action would be to proceed to attempt to create uh, a, uh, a roadway which is uh, able to uh, pass muster as a public road and then dedicate over uh, the interest, uh, the easement interests uh, that's held in that paper road to the town for, uh, for maintenance. Um, at the original meeting back in March 2016, this commission indicated a favorable posture towards uh, this plan uh, pending application for actual construction uh, and bonding, which uh, over the course of the past year has been done with uh, the planning department as well as the town engineer. Um, at this point, I will turn it over to uh, Russell Heinz, who is our planner, who's uh, put together the construction plan, which uh, he's turning to now. For the record, my name is Russell Heinz, principal of the surveying and engineering firm of Tarbell and Heinz, who prepared these plans. Um, as Mario said, um, we met many times with the previous town engineer and now with the, um, Derek Greger. Um, started out, we weren't going to go for a full through street. After much discussion, it was decided that we should have a full through street from Knott Road to Woodmont, and we're building it to the present day town standards. Um, there is like four lots. Uh, we tried to make them all <clears throat> back in the, before um, Derek came along, uh, Mike Turner and Peter Galepsi, we talked about the, um, the lots in the zone. Zone A, there's two different zones there. There's Zone A and Zone A1. And there's the lots to the north, nope, to the, to the east. We increased the size of one of them to make it a little more conforming, even though it's still non-conforming. And then the lots to the, to the west are existing, and they are, they are under size, but they are closest to the 
size of all the other lots in that area. Um, we're going to have public sewer, public water, public gas. Um, we got a drainage system that ties into <coughs> to the existing drains on Knott Street, and this has all been approved by the town engineer. I don't know if you have any questions or. I can just uh, just to um, a couple of additions. So. Um, the issue with respect to construction on the lots themselves is actually not a question that's up here today. This question here is uh, strictly with respect to the construction of the uh, road, Princeton Street. Um, also to clarify uh, a little bit about the, um, some of the legal posture on this, uh, the applicant had filed a quiet title action with respect to uh, its uh, easement right over the paper road. Um, that uh, litigation has concluded as to uh, uh, all defendants uh, who are abutters who would have interest as far as establishing uh, my uh, client's right to uh, easement across uh, the paper road, uh, Princeton Street. Um, uh, the uh, town attorney is uh, uh, aware of the uh, outcomes of that litigation and uh, I've been uh, in contact with him relating to that uh, issue. Um, so at this point, uh, we have uh, approval for the plan uh, from the Planning and Engineering Department. We have uh, appropriate bonding in the amount of approximately 450, about 435,000 um, dollars. So at this point, uh, we're open to any questions that the commission may have or public comment. So can I ask one, remind me, who owns the Paper Street? The Paper Street, as best we could tell, is owned by an individual named John Corner. He's a gentleman uh, that uh, we traced back in the 1920s. In the legal uh, action, we uh, engaged in a process of attempting to locate uh, any heirs uh, or beneficiaries of uh, Mr. Corner. Uh, we did notice publication. Uh, we went so far as to actually take out advertising in the Los Angeles Times because there was some indication that he might have gone out to California. Um, needless to say, um, we did an extensive effort to attempt to locate and uh, provide notification to any heirs or beneficiaries of the actual fee interest on Princeton Street. Uh, we're not able to locate anyone, and therefore the court uh, uh, approved our efforts uh, for notice and uh, uh, allowed us to proceed to judgment against the fee owner uh, rela relation to the uh, easement interest so so what would happen if we were to move forward with this there's a piece of property that has basically been abandoned without ownership effectively yes um, and and how what ownership right will the town have when it's all done the right that the town will have will be the uh, easement uh, the right of easement across the road uh, in uh, the same manner that uh, uh, that my client has what my uh, client will do will uh, in fact uh, a quick claim over to the town its right title and interest to any easement across the property this was uh, an issue that we discussed back in in March of last yeah. year relating to that so uh, that question it's, it's weird enough so I'm not remembering the details so so the, the town will have an easement over some abandoned property that's the bottom line that's that's as done. best we can do without the uh, you know the considering other alternatives that may be of more expensive to the town, such as a, uh, a takings or something like that. Um, that's, that's the best we could do. However, after discussion with uh, uh, town attorney and, uh, and others on staff, uh, it was thought that this uh, could be submitted to town council for dedication as a public road with that, uh, with that legal backing. Rich, did you have your hand up? Yeah, it's been a long time since we looked at a road bond, um, but I didn't see contingency or interest in there and I thought we used to collect those yeah. it should be in the bonding right yeah it's in the bond there, wasn't there I believe there was a 15% uh, in in the bond so do you think it is covered in there uh, along those lines uh, I believe it is covered in there I mean if there's an uh, issue with that obviously we can uh, address it but I believe that was covered okay if, if it's not if rich sees it again uh, we can come back to it but <clears throat> I guess I was wondering help me understand why would we even have a bond unless um, we're letting the property owner the lot owners sell the lots before the road is done um, is this 
not going to be contingent upon because <clears throat> I think it is the language that the, that the town attorney has suggested says make the requirement contingent upon the developer building the road to all our standards but being it's done why would I hold a bond unless we're gonna let the lots be sold before the roads done so there are the, the two scenarios um, you could approve it uh, with a caveat that the improvements have to be done prior to allowing the lots to be sold and or developed or the second option which is the bond option where they put the bond aside they can then uh, proceed um, you know to sell the lots uh, as long as the bonds in place um, there's the issue still about letting them build on an unimproved road that we would have to work out um, with the town engineer and the building department, but the uh, establishment of the bond would allow them uh, if they were so inclined to sell the building lots. I don't know what the intention of the developer is uh, in, in regards to that, but it would allow that to happen. Thank you. Well, what makes it tricky is it's not really a subdivision, so all of those rules don't apply. Yeah, I think you Unless we want them to. But I think the bond, uh, you know, provides us with a level yeah. of protection for for those people, uh, and that's why we're recommending it. No, and, and that's. Yep. I agree. Are we are we being asked to approve a public street before it's completed? You're you're being no. asked to approve the plans for a public street, but not the public. But not street. the acceptance. There's a. There will be a. Have to be inspected and go through everything, and. So the so the other. Brought to us for. Yes, so the there's a or. there's a secondary process that before the road would be accepted into the you know town street system, there would be a final review process. The town engineer and his uh, inspectors would do their thing, uh, sign off on the improvements. It would come back to you for a recommendation for town council to ultimately accept it when the improvements are complete. Just the same as we do with any. Yes, correct. Well, well I mean, and this is this is. I think the third time we've done this in the same general area. I mean, we did it with a, a chunk of Rutledge, Rutledge Road, Road, right? And we did it with a bunch of Amherst Street on the kind of the easterly end there, where basically it was a, you know, a grandfathered lot division that wasn't a subdivision, and all we were really doing was approving the public road profile. Yes. I just have a question. It seems that the town at you know the town attorney basically said build it first yes exactly so he did not offer to us the bond suggestion so I have some concern about deviating from his uh, advice just in terms of protecting the town protecting potential buyers and not getting the town into a legal dispute with four disgruntled buyers if the road on a prop gets built on property that doesn't belong to them right us right yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I was thinking when I put that comment up. Well, the, the suggested motion from February 26th isn't the one we adopted. Um, come again? Oh. There were, because I think I you know, added bonding to the motion that we Actually, that was, uh, if, if I may, uh, according to the uh, minutes from that March meeting, uh, the motion uh, from Commissioner Roberts to forward positive referral uh, regarding the review uh, was accepted, but with a recommendation uh, that, uh, uh, that bond be provided for the public improvement. Um, so that is why we uh, operated with the bonding requirement. I, I, I actually missed the date. I thought this was a current current letter I did too until I read it and thought it looked really familiar <laughs> Peter George you and the uh, town engineer as well as the applicants engineer went through the setup here are all these lots exactly were they previously approved in this fashion or are they all reconfigured the, lo the lines were modified a, a little bit to provide um, as much room as we felt was practical um, you can see, um, you know, the, the sizes on the, on the illustration there. That one lot there that we're pointing to is the smallest, and it really right. couldn't do much more than that. So there was some movement over on this one. This is conforming with the zone next to it. This is still not. How much smaller than the zone is that lot? Um, I said, well, it's about 1,000. 
Not that we can do much about it, but I'm I, asking. Yes. Just one second. Uh, what about the other existing lots? Do they come? Did they become non-conforming in any way? These prior existing lots are each about a uh, thousand square feet from the current zoning. They are the same size lots as were approved in the original subdivision plan. Obviously, zoning requirements changed over the years, so they're now each about a thousand square feet uh, shy on uh, full zoning compliance. Um, as I said, this street uh, here. This lot is conforming under the current zone. We have this sort of odd situation where you have a, an A1 zone up here and an A with a dividing line going right across where the paper road actually uh, was supposed to be. What about the other existing one? Well, I've got that one on the border. Does that become conforming or non-conforming? These lots are not affected by this because this is those lots are not the They're construction and everything else that happens is restricted to the area that was originally the Princeton Road fee. These lots are not affected as far as any sort of loss of, uh, of where they are. If they're non-conforming today, they were non-conforming before. Well, they will not be affected by that. Before the road was there, though, they, were, they only had the frontage. Well, they had the frontage. They had the public frontage along uh, either Knott or uh, Wilmot Street. Uh, now they'll have additional frontage with relation to the new road on Princeton. And that's conforming? That corner lot? Uh, I'm not sure, like I said. Uh, I don't think they're conforming today. They were conforming back when the subdivision was approved in 15, but. I mean, the that, backyard was conforming? Hmm? Well, it becomes a corner lot now. Right, yeah, well, right. Like it was intended to be a corner lot with the subdivision. Because plan. it's a corner lot now, yeah. does that get. Well, I think it's always but it always was a corner lot. Yeah. Right. So we Physically always, not. We always would have treated it like that. Either. Yeah. 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 I, I, I want to get back to what are we doing with their access yeah. eventually. But um, Peter, can you address why why are we not dealing with they they are less than zoning? So they're pre-existing. These, th these lots were plotted with all the other subdivisions in the neighborhood back in 1915. Uh, we didn't have subdivisions. Uh, we had plots, or, or I, I'm not sure what the terminology was back then, but they have uh, existed uh, in very close proximity to this layout since that time. Uh, so the lots are existing. They've been paying taxes on them for all this time, and obviously couldn't build on them because the public improvements uh, were, were not completed. Uh, so really all of your do and the lot lines were modified a little bit to try and maximize the size of one or uh, two of those lots um, just to give a little bit more room for somebody to build on them. So that did not trigger uh, a subdivision or a resubdivision uh, moving just moving the lot line. So therefore, it didn't trigger them coming in for a resubdivision or subdivision application, just the uh, improvement, approval of the public improvements. There was a question earlier about the lot sizes. So the lots, uh, which I guess are on the uh, west up on the top of the drawing are in the A1 zone. The A1 zone requires 13,500 square foot minimum lot sizes. The lot to the left is 12,426. The lot to the right is 12,500. So they're just, just a little shy of today's standards. But as I said earlier, they were laid out in 1915. The lots at the bottom are in the A zone. The A zone's minimum requirements are 10,500 square feet. The lot to the left there on the bottom is 10,500 square feet. The one to the right is the smaller lot, which is 8,250 square feet. What, what about the other lot to the east there? The only they four, don't they don't own, those are separate. Uh, I think the one to the left goes with the property on the adjoining street, and then obviously the houses around it are pretty much built on as it, as it exists today. You, you were talking about the Potolsky uh, property. Potolsky, if, yeah, if you look at the Potolsky property, he owns 17 Yale. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yep. But, it is a se but it is a separate lot, so. Yes. Okay. The same as the guy on the other side. Yeah. Right. His, his, his frontage goes down on two. Uh, still low. Still low, it, this, still low is not a separate lot. He's built a pool on that that goes with his house, so he would not be uh, able to uh, do that without approval that's and I don't think he would meet he wouldn't meet your minimum requirements today so so historically since 1915 there are effectively four property owners four lots each with a property owner 
that have a legal right to exist, um, paying taxes, right? Correct. Um, it, and, and it's not a resubdivision, <clears throat> so we're not really in a position to say, give me two lots that conform rather than four lots that don't. That's correct. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Tom. Tom. I just have uh, one question to make sure that I uh, heard you correctly, mm -hmm. uh, and I just want to make sure the record is clear on this. Yes. Uh, your with regards to your quiet title action, yes. the quiet title action has been successfully concluded. That is correct, yes. And you have gone to final judgment? We have gone to final judgment. Town, uh, the town attorney has been provided copies with all of the judgments. Uh, there's some suggestion about us doing an actual judgment file, which uh, is just simply a recordation uh, of, the, uh, of the complete outcome since there were several defendants. Um, so they have, those have all gone to judgment. Uh, one, of the, uh, uh, one of the lots uh, was uh, reached on a settlement basis. They actually contested uh, the case. The rest of them were not contested and therefore went to, uh, went to uh, default judgments. Um, uh, and orders have entered with respect to all of those. The one settlement has been concluded between my client and that lot owner. Uh, the only remaining defendant at the time was I named the town, which uh, my discussions with the town attorney were going to withdraw the case as against the town uh, once we got all this straightened out. And so. the appeal date for any... Well, first? well gone. These judgments were all entered into back in uh, last year, uh, around March, of 2000, March, April of 2016. So we're well past the four months, well past any appeal dates. So there's really no legal impediment to any title issues pertaining <coughs> to... Uh, you know, the, the, the rights of the developer and, and future rights to any conveyance by the developer of Correct. the rights My, of access and right. ingress we, and so forth with yep. regards to this you know, potential street. That is correct. We have established uh, our right as to both the original fee owner and then with respect to the abutters with our uh, easement right uh, and access to those interior lots. Correct. Thank you. Just a Go. quick question for Peter. Peter, um, were there any issues under our zoning regulations in terms of any potential merger of the two lots on the top to each other or the two lots on the bottom as non-conforming lots and common ownership? I just was curious if that was an issue that came up. It, it was discussed with the town attorney, but uh, our practice uh, has not gone that far in, in, in the past, um, so it was not... Um, something we were going to pursue or felt we had a, a good position to pursue. And the, and the lots at the top, I think, are meet the, meet the minimum, uh, I think as I said earlier, meet the minimum, right. re minimum requirements anyway, so they, they comply on their own. It's the one at the bottom right, right that would have yep. been, but we have not been uh, pursuing that practice. George? Yeah, uh, I'll bring up a question that's controversial because I'm not sure if it's required in subdivision law in the state of Connecticut, but I'll bring it up anyway. We have discussed this th sort of thing in the past. That's a, that's a beautiful site tree-wise, a lot of huge old trees, but I think the right-of-way will take out virtually 80% of them. Uh, are you planning on trying to preserve any trees or any of the vegetation? Uh, um, Russ, maybe you can speak to that. I mean, certainly with respect to where the roadway is going to go, the pavement's going to go, uh, you know, trees in that line will, you know, will have to go. Um, but as far as, you know, planning out, well, you know, Russ, you can probably speak. Well, just for, for the record again, but I mean, it's, you, you have to, you can't, you, whatever we can say, we would save, okay? But obviously, you know. You make you, every attempt. Please. Yes. We appreciate it. There's no, we right. can't require right. it, but we, we like to keep that. What we, we would certainly endeavor and we would prefer to have uh, the lots when they are eventually developed be in the same character as the rest right. of the surrounding neighborhood. In fact, some of those trees are so big that if you take out adjoining, a lot of adjoining vegetation, they're going to be weakened. <coughs> but, uh, try it anyway. What is it? We'll do what we can. So, so what is going to happen to the access for the two parcels on the corner? Uh, you're speaking with respect to these uh, parcels here. Um, and again, Russ, correct me if I have anything wrong. But um, 
So the street will come uh, through here, and then they have current uh, access points here. These actually are in existence now. There's essentially a shared drive that comes out. Right. On your second sheet. Yeah. On your second sheet, you can see it a little bit here. Mm -hmm. um, so you have this sort of common drive that then extends out to private drives on the properties. So much of the property. So obviously this would be replaced with the road. And there will be um, curb cut access points to both of those driveways to the Princeton Street to the two new, to the new road. Yeah. Okay. So, um, again, no um, no portion of a driver that is on the property of those individuals is affected. You have that shared portion, but that shared portion again is not owned by those lots. It's on this easement area of Princeton Road. So, uh, so they'll still have that same access. It'll just be now over a a public street as opposed to this smaller shared drive. So do you believe that you can build this road <clears throat> and the apron that goes from the curb line up to the property line and stay off of their property? Or do you have to reconstruct a driveway up to the building? Is it going to undercut it? I um, this was um, discussed and we paid a lot of attention to this and we are, you know, doing what we call a saw cut on a property line and it will will not change the grade of the driveway and in fact it's really going to improve their whole situation when you think about it because it's not the best driveway access that they got now and they have a little drainage issues there so when this road is done built it'll be it'll do an improvement plus the town engineer and myself we worked at this very hard to make sure that there was not going to be an issue with this so your expectation is you'll cut on the property line and be able to grade toward the roadway yes. and make this work? Yes. Thank you. And in are, fact, are I believe we did a drainage study. Yes. Yeah, we did, we did a drainage study uh, in support of that as well. Thank you. Okay. Are there other questions before we open it up to the public? One more question, Mr. Chairman. George? Uh, it's, it's a wet area. Uh, is there an issue of water or drainage in this area that you're not covering by your the drainage systems and your sewer systems? It's all been addressed. Yeah, all it's, we, did, we did a specific drainage study uh, consider, uh, taking into account okay. the conditions, and that was submitted to the engineer. Thank you. Is it truly wet, like wetlands, or is it? Oh, yeah. No, no, it's not. <laughs> sort of, yeah. <laughs> That'd be a whole other really? issue. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, why don't we open it up to some public comment? I assume there will be some. Um, raise your hands. You know, if there's a lot of you, you could start a line. Anybody wishing to speak for or against? It, it's between Knott and you know, Wilmont. Near Dairy Mart. Do you know where that near store the, is? Yeah. 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 Very close to that, but up, up the hill. Between 563 and 555. It's right next to the there's, there's, the house. there's a driveway between yeah. the two of them that you know I yeah, it was pretty identifiable when I drove by nope no comments please join us uh, at the microphone that's the way it has to work we have to record you come on up and give us your name address good evening uh, my name is Andy Ucello I am the owner of um, this lot. Um, I, I just ha one concern I had was um, as far as structural, any structural damage because it's so close to my house. Um, as far as uh, uh, construction you know, vibration damage, um, I'm wondering if that's going to affect, you know, the foundation of my house. You know, whether what type of heavy equipment they're going to use, as far as rollers. Um, as, as, as my my concern is, um, I just I want to know if it, it, would there be something in place like a um, a company that detects vibrating motion that could be placed in my house just to see if there's any vibration that can cause structural damage. You know, as far as, you know, cracked walls, um, things of that nature. Yeah. So, 
Let me go a little farther. Is, is there any rock in the area that you need to deal with, or is this anticipated as kind of George implied that it's a lower area where it's soil? Yeah, it's, it's soil, is my understanding, and it shouldn't create any real vibration. So you won't be issues. blasting or anything like no, that. that it's earth moving it's equipment. And that's, that's, that's what the scope so is that something? Actually, is Derek still here? Between Derek and and the yeah. town engineer, is that something that you guys would have in a normal? Um, construction permit. Typically, if there's any blasting involved, which we're not anticipating as part of this project, there's a pre-blast survey that's done to uh, verify condition of the existing structures, both before and after the blasting occurs. For a typical road reconstruction project like this, no, we don't have anything specific in our uh, in our provisions or ordinances that has any requirements as to what kind of assessment needs to be done pre and post. Um, they are working within the what will be the public right away with what they're doing, and you know any issues that come up like that, we usually would help you know moderate between the developer and the residents, but um, nothing specific as far as uh, any kind of evaluations would be done for this type of project. All right, thank you. Is that All right. Um, so the question I had is if there's any structural damage, Pull them up. If, if there's any structural damage uh, done to the house, and it may, not even it may not even show up, you know, it could be two months, six months, it could be a year, you know, prior to after the uh, road has been built. I mean, who, who would fit, fit the bill for that? I mean, what? You know, would I need to take pictures of all my joints and any weak points that this can cause? Um, and I'm just, I just want to protect my investment. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not against, uh, you know, the building of the road. Yeah. Um, but well, just I guess if it's a concern of yours, and this is not <coughs> legal advice, um, you know, take, take pictures of your basement and, you know, basically do a video all around, okay. you know, precondition and and if something turns up during a reasonable period of time after they do the work then you know keep track of who's doing the work and what it is that might be creating the problems so that you have the ability to you know identify who may be potentially liable for it and everybody's got insurance okay. all right thank you i think there was uh, another person who raised their hand Could you could could you join us? Uh, we like to get it on the tape. So I appreciate it. I know it's a pain. <laughs> Put you on stage. Sure, um, Larry Powers, 126 Main Street, Weathersfield. And um, so, question I had: We heard that lots were zoned in 1915. I think you said a lot of zoning changes since then. What's the typical practice when that happens? I thought newest laws would prevail over laws that were that old, is that not the typical standard? No, but I'll let Peter be a little more specific. Uh, uh, property rights um, that go that, oh, this is not an, a typical, so I, you know, let's premise my answer by saying that this is highly unusual. We've yeah. actually been working on this, I was just looking at the file since uh, 2008. So it's taken from 2008 sure. to get to this point today. The plans went through various gyrations. I think there was a hammerhead, a cul-de-sac, th and then when they ended up with this final through. So, there, so this is v very unusual. Rich mentioned a couple of other uh, similar situations. They all tend to be somewhat, for some reason, in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, but, but they have rights to the lots that existed. They've been paying taxes. So those rights continue on until you know, we, they tried to maximize mm -hmm. the size of the lots, as, w as we explained earlier. So. Um, Good, bad, or indifferent, they are certainly entitled. I was curious what the standard is. I know I have an old house. As soon as I touch it with a permit, I have to meet standard today. No more what it was 200 years ago, right? So I didn't know if the same applied. Doesn't apply to the, the lots. With the lots. To those buildings, that's a different code. But right. The right, right, right. I just didn't know if it was in, in a similar way. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't see any other hands, but are there any other comments? And Hello. Carmelo Stillo, I live on 157 Brown in my property. Uh, I have two lots, so it goes all the way down to Princess Street, abuts Princess Street. 
And uh, since they're going to build the road eventually, and I would have access to my backyard from Princess Street, well, they're going to be able to have a curb there for me to get into that my backyard. So to, the builders can take care of that. So you, when I do you drive you on. Pool? You, you have the pool? Yeah. Pool. Yeah, he has the oval yeah. and the rectangle in the backyard. Yeah. Race track and a. <laughs> so you're asking about a curb cut here? Uh, yes, I need mean, so I can get access into the backyard instead of putting a street cut. No. And there's a huge tree right there. If, if it's a separate lot, they probably believe it. Whatever needs to get it gradually cut. Yeah. So, you, so your frontage is over here. My frontage is on Brown Street. But I'm not close all the way back. So, so I think, I think the answer is generally yes. It's a public right of way. You would have access. The developer wouldn't necessarily pay to have that done. But when it's all done, as an abutter to the public right of way, you would go through a permit process with yep. the town officials right. to get a driveway permit, and you could build it yourself. I was going to tell you they're going to put the curb or not put the curb? Well, they would probably put the curb there. I'm sure you can talk to them when they're out there building it. Maybe there's something you can work out. Yeah, not to put the curb there so I can have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that, I mean, that's something as... Part of a town standard, we normally would not provide a driveway apron to the rear of the property. I mean, you have one, I'll assume, off of Brown Street. Um, so we could talk about your specific situation uh, separate from this project as to as to what your need is for access to the rear of your lot. Right. Typically, we wouldn't want a paved apron. Um, yeah. at, at times, if there's a, a significant need or, or uh, yeah, for that, we might do like a depressed curb that is needed. that is just grass, so it's not actually an apron. Um, but that's something you know we would talk about offline. My, my, yeah, I go 250 feet from ground to the back, and when I need to get to my tool shed or whatever, that's quite a haul. All right. So I think what you I heard from the town double, engineer that there's you know, I, something. I do have a double lot, and years. it's like I said, it's quite a haul for me to get anything out of my tool shed into the backyard or material delivered if I want any material delivered back there. Can't so you're all excited about this project. <laughs> I'm sorry? So you're all excited about this project? Well, you know what? <laughs> damn if you do, so, damn if you don't, you know? Yeah, it's going to help me out, but I like the woods. I like the area. It's quiet. You hear the birds, you know? At one time, there used to be even turkeys walking around in those little woods. They haven't seen them anymore. But yeah. uh, it's a nice, quiet area. So but I, then again, I have no complaints. They want to build. You know, I'm not going to stop them. So I think what you heard, the answer to your, your issue is to just coordinate with the town staff and... Uh, to have access into my backyard from Princeton Street. Yeah, in I would some, recommend in some manner. that separately in some from manner. your overall approval. Yeah, yeah. correct. All right? All right, yeah. Thank you. Other questions, comments from the public? Speak now. All right, applicant want to join us back here. Other questions from the uh, commission? Good question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Tony. What's proposed right away with Proposed roadway width and will there be sidewalks? I apologize. I'm going to have to ask you to repeat that because I so didn't hear it. Proposed right away width, the roadway width, and will there be sidewalks? Okay, uh, there. Oh, Russ, you can. Right away, that. 50 foot. Yeah. Pavement width is 28 feet, and there is no sidewalk. Right. And it's the consistent with the, the north and or the east and west streets, and uh, this is um, a little wider than the. Cummings and a little wider than Wilmot. Wilmot. Yeah, no, Wilmot and Prince In your drainage analysis, Knot Street can handle that additional yes. impervious uh, drainage area. And, and basically, when this whole subdivision, all the drainage was really put in, mm -hmm. that goes back to right 1900, this was all anticipated really as being developed. So we just never got to develop. Yes, the drainage does handle it. The system is there. Thank you. This is a surplus job, right? You're, are you keeping everything on site? All of your excavation for building the road? There's an item for removing of excess material. I wasn't sure if that was just there as a placeholder in case you had to remove some of it. But it's basically, we have to remove it. But it's, it's basically, this, this is um, the grade that's there. Is the grade of the road will be. The only, only material that's being removed is the topsoil, really, maybe the, the sub base. And we'll try to get 
try to use it on the developable lots if we can. In the past year, we looked at it every month. And then, you know, this, this area is kind of wet. What's the proposed sub base? I mean, have you looked at a geotech analysis, or is it just a town standard you're using for the roadway with, for the roadway just material town base? Standards for the time being. And then we'll, analyze, we'll do an analysis when we do excavation if it needs to be something added. The, so that, so. Yeah, that's my concern. Obviously, if the town will take ownership of this, they're going to be responsible for the next 20 years. If it's a wet area, you know, we want to make sure that you got enough sub base out there that we're not out there paving it again in 10 years. Well, we, we intend to continue to work closely with uh, town staff engineer uh, with respect to that to make sure that it is uh, something that will be suitable for taking over by the town. So, so. this is my final question. So will, will this be owned, will this be an easement for the town or are we going to own this swap of land? Um, this would be, I mean, from that perspective, this would be an easement right owned by the town. The only way to get the fee at this point, I mean, it, it it's abandoned property, realistically. We don't have an owner for that property. We went through the court process. We went through the attempt to try to find an owner. We can't find an owner for that. So it's abandoned property, but at this point, unless you do a taking mechanism or something like that, you know, we can provide our right in the real estate, which is the easement right to the town. The easement right, uh, uh, as commission members know, it allows all rights to maintain and uh, improve the easement uh, and uh, so that that should give the necessary legal authority for the town to be able to maintain uh, and improve the lot uh, that road uh, as needed um, you know short of that I mean I've spent the last four years trying to figure out how the best way we can deal with this legally and the way that the title the chain of title is um, you know this is what we can do Peter, is there a, a process by which uh, town council also accepts this road? Yeah, there's yep. a, as I said earlier, there's a secondary process after the improvements uh, are completed, inspected, um, record drawings are submitted, uh, a re final report will be submitted by the town engineering department uh, to this commission. You will have this matter in front of you. You actually have not, I don't think you've had one since I've been here in the last 13 years, so that's why you're probably asking the question because you haven't experienced it yet, but it will come in front of you and then ultimately a recommendation will be made uh, uh, to town council who, who will make the final decision to accept it into the public street system. So, so it's kind of a rubber stamp type process. Would you agree given that the developer by that point in time will have expended a substantial amount of money to build a road? Uh, yeah, unless the engineering department, you know, fi finds fault uh, or, or, you know, some defect with the way the road was constructed, uh, right. it's pretty typical that that process is pretty straightforward and at that point in time. And so town council doesn't have a role during the preliminary discussions? No. Per se. All right. nope. for, the, for the record, there are several pieces of uh, current, uh, current correspondence. Uh, two property owners. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll rephrase that. At least one. Uh, Andy Ucello, uh, 563, is that the... Uh, that you okay um, in an email opposed to development of this uh, of these properties uh, and obviously that's an adjacent neighbor and another email from Sergio Perez I'm not seeing an address um, but again uh, voicing opposition to the development I, I assume that individual is not here tonight uh, then there are a couple 569 not street is up on here 569 569 thank you very much uh, Peter has a uh, piece of correspondence referencing the uh, 423,000 excuse me yeah 423,000 dollar bond requirement $500 $500 thank you <laughs> um, for the ferret yeah. And um, and there's a letter from town fire marshal, which is dated. I'm sure it would be subject to the current thoughts of fire marshal. And uh, then there's the earlier we referred to it before February 2016 um, document from Peter to us, where there is a recommendation from uh, Jack Bradley regarding the motion that we would make. I, I guess I'm a little confused still in what exactly we say tonight if we were to 
move forward. We just approve. Am I I approve the plans, uh, however you want to title it, uh, as designed for Princeton Street, and then uh, as a secondary aspect of that, uh, once again, you want to discuss that, uh, to establish the bond amount yeah. as prescribed in the town engineer's estimate, uh, $423,500. Um, and, and is it a belt and suspender type thing? Where I mean, I'm kind of in, inclined to be saying, build the road before you sell the lots, right? So the... So the bond, which is consistent with what the, you know, the town attorney said 10 months ago, 12 months ago, and kind of what I was thinking. So it's a belt and suspender approach. Build it and give me the bond, right? If they provide the bond, they don't have to. You I mean, would suggest typical they, they, they can. Okay, so, so we can, you know, as a commission, we can discuss how we might want to handle that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, any additional questions for the applicant? Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, I didn't like the previous memo to Mike Turner back in 2014, and I didn't pick up on until I read it the second time, but I don't think the idea of the nearest fire hydrant across on Knott Street makes sense to me. That's a very busy street. I think there ought to be, I think the town planner could uh, suggest to the town fire marshal that they put one on the street somewhere. I think we caught the southern end of it, maybe. I don't know. Plus, there's one out there on uh, Wilmot. That wasn't mentioned back in that moment. Okay. I think the street needs a fire height, is what I'm saying. I don't think running lines out across Knott Street makes sense at any point in time. That was a neighbor during the day. God help, I hope there's no fire down there over the next 50 years. I guess it's not for us to say, I mean, if we got to put a hydrant in there, but we, we went by the fire marshal's, yeah, you know, recommendation. So, you know, yeah. you know, so I just, Same you know. Same fire marshal, too. Okay. Um, is there one on Wilmont Street? I'm sure there is on somewhere, I but don't know. I, I, but I, I but we were never asked to show anything, and we were. If there is one out there that's close to the uh, yeah. end of this street, I, I I would be okay for this. I'm not a fire person, but it just seems like they need one nearer than the other side of North Street. So so maybe we can consider that thought um, during the motion process if we were to head down that path. Staff could always work with the fire marshal and just make sure staff could just work with the fire marshal and make sure that they're comfortable with you know what's being proposed and reconsider the situation. All right. I, didn't hear you I just want that nope. made known to him. That's all. Um, so just uh, just a question about your um, siltation, your, your silt fencing. Um, there was comments made by our, our town engineer about uh, back in March 2017, you know, last month. And he just had a couple of comments, right? So it sounds to me that he did find that your construction cost estimate is, is acceptable and reasonable, so that's, that's good to hear. But the other uh, point he raised was the silt fence. And, and showing that on the plan. So I, you know, you do show it on the current plans right now, and I was wondering if, if Derek got a chance to take a look at that. It seemed that you did um, incorporate his concerns and comments. Um, is he good with what you're proposing? Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and once again, for the record, these individual lots, they have to come back to uh, the building department for a regular site-specific approval. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, his biggest comment was that I thought the silt fence followed the tree line, yep. proposed yeah. tree line. So and also at the at the back of the property right. as well. Yeah. 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 So. It, it, to me, it looked like you, that that's what you incorporated his concerns. Yes. But yeah. I just wanted to double check that yes. because those were like the only two comments he had. And um, based on what I see on the plans, um, taking a look at where you're locating your drainage catch basins and where you're discharging to, the size of the pipe, I sometimes take a look at the drainage. Um, the utilities you have out there, it seemed to me that it looked acceptable. Okay. The plan looked acceptable to me. Okay. That's all. Thank you. All right, seeing no additional comments. Final question, the streetlights. 
Yes. Um, we have, again, Russell, I'm going to have to rely on you for this one. We have uh, proposed street lights. There's an existing. There's an existing, yeah. Cummings and not, okay? There's an existing street light on the at Wilmot, and we're proposing one in the middle. Right. That you'll just put on a utility pole. Right. Or it'll be a regular scene. It's probably going to be underground with these utilities, so this will have to be a regular lamppost. Okay. Detail, yeah. Detail. yeah. Are the utilities very? That's, that's what he's proposing. Nice. Okay, good. All right. Um, seeing no additional questions, comments, anybody want to make a motion regarding the hearing? Motion to close the hearing. Thank you. That was tough. Well, was I was pulling teeth. <laughs> and a second from Tony. Thank you very much. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, great. So, uh, Motions, discussion before motion. Anyone? Tom? I'll proceed. There, there is a, a motion or a suggested motion that's contained in the uh, 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 report yeah. from Peter dated uh, February 26, 2016. Um, and I guess you know, my motion would be to utilize the wording of that suggested motion uh, with uh, uh, some caveat that I'm not sure about um, whether or not to include as, um, uh, as, as uh, additional provisos uh, to the number one and number two of that recommended motion. Uh, the, the recommendations, comments of the town engineer and the fire marshal. Just, just to clarify with Peter, the, the memo from February 2016, that was the response to the 824 request from the town council. And we did this last year. They're looking for something different now. Yes. Basically, approval of the proposed road profile or yeah that's kind of what I'm planning profile yep yeah as detailed in the plan set that you received prepared by Tarbell Heinz and Associates so the motion then would be to approve the uh, plans as uh, submitted um, uh, dated um, at least stamped as April 10th, 2017, as being received by the town of Wethersfield. That's essentially what uh, the motion would need to uh, 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 provide right. acceptance for. Right. And then if you want to deal with the bond issues, a separate. And, and, and so let's just kind of go through and add some caveats to that, right? It's conditions that um, as, as um, with, with comments incorporated, with comments town by town staff incorporated into those plans. That's so moved. All right. And then um, the bond issue. Now, Peter, Peter just pointed out to me that the plans themselves that we're using as a reference indicate on note one, note number one, that the lots will not be sold until the binder course is down. So no, the bil building permits. Excuse me. I'm sorry. The building permits. Right. Building permits. Will not be issued until the binder course of pavement is installed. Is that a standard town condition on a subdivision? Uh, pretty much it is. Um, even with the with the bonding in place, we, that's what we're doing with the uh, Debaco uh, subdivision out there as well. And and in terms of COs, what has to be done before a CO can be issued? Um, COs are, uh, uh, we will uh, issue COs if, um, you know, obviously the binder is in place if some of the other outstanding uh, matters aren't resolved, assuming we still have the bond in place to demand final um, improvements. So uh, that's a grayer area, but um, because we have some provisions in your regulations that a certain number, a percentage of the lots have to be completed before the final coat goes down so the road doesn't get damaged. So it's a, it's a little different standard. Okay. Well, I mean, and I guess 
again it's tricky because this isn't isn't a subdivision approval right road so we need to kind of finesse in all of the things that we care about okay so I guess uh, I'll second so Tom's motion and add the condition that a bond be provided in the amount of four hundred and twenty three thousand five hundred as approved by the town engineer um, and that includes the contingency for it. Uh, and that that assumes that the contingency and interest that we traditionally collect is included in that and if not that the amount will be revised upward to include the same um, All right. Was there any uh, except those, uh, so those I'm going to summarize it because yeah, I, th yes, I, I think in my mind I, there's two conditions. We've said, you know, we want to we're um, proposing to approve the plans dated what? Well, um, I'm not sure that the plan. I don't the see the date on the plan. The final itself, revision. The, the final revision date is two twenty seven seventeen. I think throughout uh, the date that I think Tom mentioned was the date that they were received they were in the planning office. By the town, yep. right? we received by the town, with, right. with two conditions so far, one being that comments from the staff will be incorporated, and the second one that a bond in the amount of four twenty three five hundred, um, or as may be appropriately uh, corrected. Um, so there's two conditions. Was, was there anything else? Well, I guess and to deal with George's question, the staff to contact the fire marshal to confirm. Thank you. That the hydrant on Knott Street is adequate for this. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate yeah, thanks for bringing me back to that. And, okay. I guess I would just make sure nobody forgets. It. I would just ask nope. if you put this proposed motion together with the 824 referral previously. Um, when is the developer required to deed its easement interest to the town? To ensure that that's in place, you know, before these things are out to four different uh, buyers, and that there's no issue with that. Is that a? I mean, that would be a condition of they can't be accepted until then. But how are we protected between the issuance of building permits, selling lots, and so forth? I think you could probably add a, a, another condition regarding that to the satisfaction of the town town attorney that those documents be either provided now or at the appropriate time before construction right escrow or right later something we we've done the escrow situation uh recently on those other subdivisions so, so how would you phrase that that the property property ownership or property conveyance will be um well, dealt with uh the, the, well developer to convey you know right. necessary rights easement rights to town of weathersfield in form acceptable to town attorney and then I think what Peter is saying is we could decide you know whether to require those documents to be worked out now in a form acceptable to the town attorney in advance in which case we hold them until some point which I guess is the act of uh, acceptance or something right yeah right. no. yeah I think that's the way to do it because I don't want to take title to right. anything right so, until and, it's built and are we still in the mix from a year ago with the condition that the town attorney had i assume that's still in force that talks about the developer demonstrating satisfactory legal title and sufficient documentation that's still that's still out there yeah okay yeah i mean and that's an ordinary condition yep. of the acceptance yep. of the room okay in other words that's that condition still holds as far as you're concerned rich joe brings it up and i have a similar concern that he would have yeah i mean the they're kind of two valid? separate things i mean the the a24 had conditions and that's for the ultimate acceptance of the road this is kind of an interim step to allow them to know this is the road we're going to build but all of those previous requirements still remain in effect to the extent that they aren't being replaced by what we're doing here I'm sure glad we got a lawyer telling us or lawyers telling us how this works. So I guess I, you know, would it, would it make sense, Rich, in terms of the condition that I just suggested to say that those documents in a form acceptable to the town attorney, should it be prior to conveyance of lots, prior to issuance of building permits, or both? Well, I don't know who's going to be building the houses, so I don't know. Right. 
I would say prior to the conveyance of the lots, because I mean, if they're going to be building the houses, they okay. can own their whole problem themselves, and yep. we don't want it. But okay. if they're going to start selling lots to innocent third right. parties, then I think we want to be in a position to deal with it. Yes. You can confirm that with the real town attorney. <laughs> All right. So we have a motion by Tom and a, and a second by Rich. Right. Rich, just just to be clear, did we add the the uh, presentation of uh, you know the rights that the town needs? That's in there now. Yeah, that's in there as yeah. far as I. Yeah. And, and, okay. And then final word. I mean, I, I'm thinking that you're going to go back and ask the town attorney, and you'll tweak the motion to say it appropriately. I will. Yep. Um, but I've got your notes, uh, and it was added by Rich to the to uh, the conditions of the uh, of the motion. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think the key thing is before third parties take title to anything, that the town have whatever it ultimately needs to make this happen. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there any more discussion on the item? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? A long time coming 2008 nine years appreciate it thank you very much members of the commission all right <clears throat> next item on the agenda public hearing on the application 1944-17-z thomas sapia seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2 of the regs to offer takeout meals on a daily basis at 136 Main Street. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Tom Sapia. I live at 136 Main Street, same property that we're going to be talking about tonight, where uh, the um, Ascot Catering is located. Uh, we are an off premise uh, catering company, only offering off premise. And we're, uh, we've been asked over the years by a lot of people in town if we could sell them our food. And we really, because of stipulations from 2003, are not allowed to sell our food or have customers come on, on our property. So we're here to see if we can uh, amend that and, uh, and do the uh, to-go to -go meals, prepared meals, for, uh, for anybody who wants them. So could you take a couple minutes and, and describe, because this is what comes to my mind, yeah. how do people come in and out of your business? How do you plan to have well, them? Well, we, we deliver everything, and it's all done by phone, computer. No, in the future. If in the future, no. Up. Well, we have a, we have a, we have a door. We have, you know, we, have, we, have, we have a front door that we're going to have for, we have a back door that we will use for deliveries. We're going to be putting in a, a, a handicap accessible uh, door to the left of our building. We have a door there now, which is have to build a, a five by five platform with a short ramp, which is only a two percent grade, so it's uh, it's you know it's in with the, within the guidelines. Close Jensen and Miller's been out there, so it drops down to the driveway, right? And that's going to be your primary access point for, yes, the, for the public, public yes, to access. Yeah. And the reason why we're not using the front doors is because uh, of uh, fire separation gets too complicated because we also have a residence upstairs. So that side door is all concealed in that fire separation. Chairman? Yes, George. Um, even though the new part you're going to utilize is in the right front, mm -hmm. your people are going to come in the back? They're back. going to come in to the left of the front. If you're facing the building, yeah, it's there's double doors. Door there's also a door on that left side of the bump that out. door on the left side in the front? Yes. Even though, oh, but your sign is down there, of course, doesn't have anything to do with what you're going to be doing. Right. Uh, it says go back. Uh, okay, where do the people park? Well, we have uh, six you, spaces. I mean, you, you treated it somewhat here. Let me put it that way. I've read it, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. I mean, go through a scenario of the day. Uh, well, in general, I mean, how many people... Maximum. Well, we're hoping to do at, say five o'clock at night or noon. Yeah, we're, we're or hoping whatever. to do maybe 50 customers a day coming in to get food because we're not we're looking for people to be ordering meals, family meals and things like that. So that's our that's our thought. And, uh, you know, right now we're mostly a, we, we do events. 
So, you know, we're used to doing big events. We don't deliver to less than 15 people right now. Trying to open it up so that uh, if an office wants to do a lunch for five or six, they can come pick up their food and bring it to the office because we, we don't do that. So we lose out on a lot of business doing that, but we can't afford to send people out delivering all everywhere. So we thought maybe we could build our business up considerably. Right now, right now, our business, we, we look at our books and we only actually do 10% of our sales in the town of Wethersfield because we're all over the state. I do more in Hamden in a year than I ever did in, in Wethersfield. So I'm trying to become more accessible to the Wethersfield residents also. I think your idea is good. Hmm. I'm just trying to get at the practical use of parking. Yeah, and, well, like uh, as we have, we have six spots. Could be parking. You know, your driveway is about 12 and a half feet wide. Mm -hmm. A new driveway, and that's, that's all good. Uh, yeah. And then uh, at least you're, you would be bringing out that front door. I thought you might be going out that back door. I wasn't quite sure. No, no, uh, no, no, no. Uh, you know, and... Uh, the back door leads to the kitchen. What happens if, say, say, three or four people come at one time? Are they going to park in that driveway? They can't all park out front? And well, you've got parking spaces against the... We've got the, six the, spots the, behind the, the building. Back. Yeah, there's six spots back there. But, but how can you put parking spots against the garage, open front of the garage? Well, we just don't use the garage. The garage isn't really used for cars anyway, so it's, uh, we can put cars, we can put a... Four parking spots along the front there. You're not using the garage really for the cars. No. Then, so. No. No. Well, it's used mostly I just for storage. To ask that question. Yeah. And that uh, there were some questions saying. about the lines uh, the <coughs> from the uh, the town. Uh, yeah. But so I'll, I'll while you're reading it, I'll read it yeah. to the public. So the okay. so just so the public understands, there's a memo <coughs> dated today from uh, the town planner uh, indicating. Town engineer, uh, thank you. Town the town engineer, Derek. Three things identifying if the front or side doors are served as the main building access, which is exactly what I was getting at. The plans were a little funky looking. Um, the proposed handicaps parking spot, it must be in the back. Yeah. Is in the back. Okay. A little difficult to get to. So, what other alternatives might there be? Uh, that's comment two. And comment three is the striping that is proposed to delineate those six spots seem to be on gravel surface, which certainly won't last. So uh, clarify you know, what, what the intent is there. So that's what's coming from the town engineer. Okay. Yeah, and my own thoughts are you know, this 12-foot driveway is now going to become more often used as a two-way roadway as somebody goes back there and says, oh, is there a parking spot, right? Yeah. And so you're going to have in and out on this 12-foot driveway now. I'd almost prefer you say no parking in the rear you know no, I, it, I would like that too but when street. i was up here in 2003 there was I, they didn't want me to park my own cars on the street yeah. so i had to you know i had to uh make a comment on that so i mean i can park on you know you can't tell me that i can't park on the street but no right and and you know we we were told to try and utilize the back at one time we had a plan to put 20 spots around that building but we opted not to pave because it's such a beautiful area and you were taking down the garage weren't you no, the garage went up afterwards. Oh, we, okay. That's why we, we ended up putting the garage up afterwards. And we, we own our properties are so close to the two buildings on each side of us. We actually own the stairs for the synagogue on one side. The stairs are on our property line, which, you know, doesn't matter to us. And on the other side, the business is very close to us, too. We're only inches away from their foundation. So we opted not to, to do the extra paving and uh, went with just a, a parking area out, out back and... Uh, you know, at that point, we said, well, okay, we'll just do it without having the public customers, you know, because it was just not, you know, they, they didn't want it back then. It was just too much. We just wanted to get in and do our catering because that's what we always did. And, uh, you know, if, if, if I can utilize the street parking, which there's plenty of, and utilize the, uh, the parking behind the, uh, the firehouse, the Keeney, I mean, everybody always mentions these places. I mean, not that everybody parks down there and walks all over the place, but it is a, it is a walking town far as I'm concerned you know when I go places I park down the street and I walk to the place you know I have no problem with that it's a beautiful town to, to park in so um, parking just seems to be such an issue down there you know we want to have businesses but we don't want to have customers and you know we don't want we, we can't have customers with cars you know I am on a bus line so hopefully a lot of my customers will come maybe you know from on the bus but <laughs> I can't I can't I can't be assured of that good luck with that 
Yeah. Well, no, we're just trying to open up so that we can do business. You know, a lot of people have been asking me for years to, to, to if they could buy a pan of this and a pan of that, and we just, right. you know, we try not to, to do that. I'm sorry. Okay. Peter, does he provide adequate parking for the new, the change of use? And this is a change of use, a serious, and it, a significant one, I'll put it that way, compared to previous use we approved. I, I, the decision on the parking availability is really yours to make. They're in the village business district zone, which does allow uh, the flexibility that they're asking for in terms of uh, whether the on-street parking and the off-site parking is sufficient for their particular business needs. So uh, they are in that zone that would allow them uh, not to add parking and to you know, uh, exist with the parking situation that uh, is out there today. So I, I think the, maybe the question is of Mr. Sapia, you know, his observations of the parking situation and you know, close proximity to his business at the times um, you think you need that parking what are your what are your observations on we were that? out there about five o'clock this evening and there wasn't a car anywhere near our on either side of the street so that would be the times where I would think people would be stopping in grabbing their stuff and taking off you know we're looking for we're looking at a 10 minute 10 to 15 minute stop by most customers and hopefully a heavy dinner dinner yeah demand. they're gonna take it to go there's not gonna be no seating and no hanging around so it's gonna be just pick up and go and with a lot of, you know, with the older folks, we'll bring the food out to their car and get them loaded up quicker and, and you know, send them on their way. There are also, just for the record, there are two, uh, which is unusual, two on-street handicapped parking spaces designated in front of uh, the temple next door, which I assume have existed. They've been there since I've, I've had the building. So. so that's very unusual. So in terms of the handicapped accessibility, uh, not that it's right there, but it is in somewhat... Uh, proximity which obviously serves the temple when they have um, service and have events there thank you do you think Tom? there's adequate parking and the, when they have their services I, I I'm not there on the weekends when they tend to have their services so I can't I can't speak to the temples um, well, you they're know, only there on impact. Friday night I think so it's, it's empty Saturdays and Sundays there's nobody there there's a dance crew that comes in on Sunday nights but we're not open on Sunday or Monday and you're gonna have six and a, up to six and a half employees according to well we have we have a <laughs> six now I mean we're allowed to have six now you're talking about one or two more one one and a half yeah more. You can have half a I have a couple more. halves right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but for the most part, my, my crew is very good. T Tom? Peter, I'm, try I'm trying to figure out how to answer that. How to, how to comment. Uh, I think, I think but, just move on. Uh, yeah, I, Tom. I do have a question about your business operations. That, you know, as you plan. For this uh, new phase of your business mm -hmm. operations, what this appears to be from what I can gather, a, um, a system in which people will need to call ahead in advance and order mm -hmm. a meal. We're hoping most people meals, will. Yeah. And then come in and pick, pick it up. Mm -hmm. um, so there wouldn't be any waiting for them to pick it up. They just come in, right. pay their bill, take the food out, mm -hmm. and go their merry way. Right. Uh, you're not accepting walk-ins for that purpose. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say that we won't take walk-ins. I mean, it's going to happen. I can't. I can't tell people you can't just walk in here and get something. We are going to have food available for pickup, prepared foods. So if they want to come in and grab something that's already ready to go, it, I'm gonna, we're going to have to allow that. You yeah, know, it, it's that, a big space. It looked like it had freezers yeah. and such along the wall. So oh, I yeah. assume it was prepared food without calling. Yeah, right? Is that uh, yeah. That's it's a big it's a big space. It's a you've you've got six employees now. Yeah, and you've got six parking spaces on site. Where do these employees? Park? There's really only two of us that are full time. My son is one of them, and I'm the other. And then everybody else is part time right now. So it's just they come in. A lot of them are in college. They come in, work a couple hours, and they go to go to class, and they come back later. So it's kind of in and out and. A lot of times they park on the street or they're parking in my driveway right now, but that's going to have to change, obviously. You know, we're going to have to start parking down the road. They're all young. They can walk. I walk. I park my car down the street. I have no problem with that, you know. 
So are you saying that all the spaces, all those six spaces that are now being sort of utilized by employees when and as they come and go will be reserved for customer parking only? That's, so yeah, that, that was the intention to. Because I think our, our concern is, or at least my concern is, you know, the, the space is, is plenty big and adequate for this expansion of your mm -hmm. business. But the parking situation right. is, is very, very narrow. I mean, Main mm -hmm. Street at that point is, is narrower than Main Street further north. Yeah. And uh, the on-site, you know, or the, the on-road, on-street parking is, uh, is parallel. And, and it's, I don't see that there are that many spaces that are available. And it'll be dependent upon how much those are occupied by mm -hmm. you know, other parking requirements. I think we have uh, just on our side of the street between the property next to me and before those handicapped spots, I think there's space for about seven cars. And there's never seven cars there. It might be three at the most at any one time. Sometimes the business across the street parks a car over there. Sometimes I have a couple cars there. Then sometimes they're on the other side. You know, it depends. It's, it's you know, the jewelry store. He has a little parking in the back, but most people you go to him use the street too. You know, everybody uses the street there. And I don't care how many parking lots you put in; people are going to park on the street because it's convenient. Hop in, get in the store, get in your car, and go. They don't want to be backing up and worrying about this and that. And, mm -hmm. You know, most of those businesses have parking spots. I don't see people going into their parking areas that often. You know, I think the street. I think it's. I think, I think that old Weathersfield is meant to have a, a street full of with people down there shopping and having a good time and enjoying it. And I think we got to bring a little bit more up our end of the street because everything's down the other end. And uh, to be honest with you, yeah, it's wider down that end, but it's, it's a little less dangerous up my end. Just getting, uh, you know, walking across the street, you got people, I mean, you got little kids going across the street, and, you know, they don't use the crosswalks half of the time. And you got cars, you know, they're parking. I don't think there's one business on that main road down there that has enough parking spots for each individual business if everybody had full capacity at any one time. Right. There's, there's no such thing. Right. You know? So, I mean, I actually have more spots than most of those businesses do down that way, you know, dedicated to my business. So, I mean, I don't see a problem with me, you know, with cars parking there. It's, you know, we've been keeping an eye on it. It's, it's, it's empty, like, you know, Five o'clock tonight, no cars. In the morning, is it gets a little busy during rush hour, but we don't have a problem. People are, you know, in and out. We're just we're in and out and doing deliveries and stuff. So it's, you know, well, we always we bad. always come to the same conclusion every time we have, you know, a, a business here before us. And if the parking is that bad, it'll affect your business. So, mm. you know, it's good to risk that. Arguably, a business owner yeah. is willing to take. Uh, are there additional questions for the applicant, or should we open it up to the public? I just had a question. Okay. Um, so it was nice to, to see you this afternoon. I was out there at 5. I was, and I noticed there wasn't many cars out there. Did he feed you? Said. So, um, yes. <laughs> Did he feed you? What's that? Did he feed you? He offered. No. We can't. No, We're not allowed to. Not, no. no. I, but, we got uh, the right answers. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, where your handicap ramp is. Mm -hmm. uh, or rather the handicapped parking space. So that's eight feet wide. And mm -hmm. then next to it is a cross hatched area and that's eight feet wide. What is that cross hatched area? Do, do you recall on the plan? Mm -hmm. Do you mean? To, uh, right here, right to the, I'll say to the uh, west. Yeah. I don't know if you know what that is. Cause I'm just wondering yeah, you you're, you're, you're talking about right here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's just uh, extra space. Yolanda, it's the, it's, it's wider than eight feet. That's like 16 feet. It's the requirement for a van accessible space you see the note um so that's part of the parking yeah, stall yeah. it's okay so that's part of the it's just parking. pavement yeah, markings there's room for their uh, okay you know their yep. ramp to come down okay. and um and i think the only i did take a look at um what's proposed for your your slope your handicap ramp slope it is a little steeper than what uh the ada compliance um suggests but i think it is within some sort of guidelines so i'm not concerned about that mm -hmm. The only concern I, I really have, and it's not a deal breaker, mm -hmm. but the only concern I really have is, is um, the fact that, as, as someone suggested earlier, as it's almost like a one-way 
or alternating one way sort of driveway. It is. You know, where if you're trying to drive in and you're trying to get a space in the back, you may not know that the that the lot is full, so now you have to turn around or maybe you're trying to come in and the vehicle's coming out. Mm -hmm. But as someone else suggested, um, it's the kind of thing where if you want to take the risk, you can or you have to drive carefully because you're not driving at mm -hmm. high speeds through there. Um, and you could just park on the side of the road. So there's a lot of options. Right. So I, I think it's, you know, it's a good idea and I think it could work out mm -hmm. as far as where people want to park or um, how they want to, you know, utilize your parking area. So right. I think it's a, um, um, I find it, you know, acceptable. Thank you. Are there, uh, I, just have, I just have one question. Mm -hmm. so I can't find a menu and so is it, do people call and they find out what's available at the time or like? Yeah, well, I mean, we're not set up like that. We do have a, we do have a web page. We have Facebook where we do. Yeah, I was flipping auto, through. We, we do automatic, <laughs> we do automatic ordering. I mean, that's a new face. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're going to be doing, we're going to get more into uh, the prepared food end of it soon. It, so it'll be like standard items plus yeah. maybe some seasonal yeah. stuff. My, my son that. takes care of a lot of this. He does all that, that stuff. I'm not much with Facebook and uh, okay. the menus, but he's... I wasn't sure if it stayed, uh, sort of you call and find out what's available. Uh, well, we'd like to do that. We'd like to have like a weekly thing where we have a couple of special items that run the week uh -huh. so that people can check the, you know, we want to get people more onto the uh, computer and checking what we do and mm -hmm. calling up. And that, that would give us a better chance of getting an order over the phone from them too. Or right now we have an automatic where uh, companies actually just order online and it shows up on our computer, you know, for a lunch for 25 or 30 or whatever. And they just kind of punch everything in and we get it and, and uh, take care of it from there. Right. It works out good. You know, we, we just want to, we just want to open up and be part of it. Another thing is I'm, I'm the only uh, person on the old Wethersfield Shopkeeper Association that doesn't have a shop. It would be nice to be part of, uh, you know, of, of that and, uh, and, you know, take more part into what, in what they do, a lot of the promotions they do. And, uh, you know, I think it'll be a good addition to, to downtown, uh, all weather's field there. All right. So thank you. I, we're going to, if you could uh, relax and have a seat if you care. And okay. is, is there somebody who uh, wants to comment on this application? There's a lot of people in the audience tonight, but nobody's uh, here to say anything on anything. Oh, we got a hand up. That's what I made for dinner. <laughs> the rest of you just came to see the show that we put on? <laughs> they want their money back. <laughs> so Larry Powers, 126 Main Street in Wethersfield. So I'm two houses down from Tom and Julie. Um, for the most part, I don't really have big concerns about it, but I would like to talk about the parking. Um, there are times of the day when I'm stuck in my driveway for four or five minutes before I can back out. Um, I think you need to consider the road condition because as you pointed out, it's narrow. And one of the, so a question I actually had, maybe you're the wrong board, is they started to put some small, and I'll call them underpowered streetlights in the business district, and they end just before Tom's business. Are there plans to continue those down? Is that this department? Well, you might know. Mr. That's a Gillespie. good and it's a timely question because I've been having this conversation with the town engineer <laughs> and the town manager over the last couple of weeks. Uh, there was a, uh, for lack of a better term, master plan done. Um, we got a grant in 90, I, 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 I'm not going to quote the d dates, but there, there was a primary area and a secondary area. We're trying to figure out right. what the secondary area was, th this area and then an area uh, towards the cove were part of the secondary uh, area. I think the plan got uh, minimized because of the lack of funding. Okay. So there is an interest uh, and it's being explored right now to uh, potentially expand that, figure out how to do that, figure out what the costs are, but it's, uh, uh, we're not, there's nothing specifically on the table right now. Okay, because I, I do feel those are very underpowered lights. If you have cars and pedestrians in the area, when you get down to that part of the street, it can be dark. And the reason I bring that up is come wintertime. I mean, it sounds like Tom's trying to provide parking in the back. But again, as even he said, people in a Wethersfield park on the street. And I'm thinking of February, January, when it's dark and the street's now two to three feet narrower. And you've got somebody opening a door. 
um, maybe having to walk three or four car lengths to get to the driveway because they can't get over the berm, that at least that needs to be considered, how, how that could be impacted. Um, and I thought of this while I was here, is that summer, right now it is great, but Friday and Saturday nights between um, the couple bars we have and the boat traffic in and out of the, out of the cove kind of creates the same situation. So just something to think about when you're considering the capacity for this. Um, and I think the only other thing I want to bring up is, like you said, we have two handicapped parking spots. I don't really think they can be utilized. They're pretty far from where Tom's suggesting the door. So it's possible. But one thing I'm going to note is that whenever there's an event downtown, people are parking illegally in every spot in front of hydrants, um, in front of the no parking zone in front of my house. And I would say in the past two years, I've called six times to the police. They've never shown up once. So something's got to be given some consideration as we're ramping up business in this end because we're still a good bit of residents down here. I'm a resident. I don't plan on starting a business. Maybe when I sell, it'll happen. But um, something has to be considered for that, something a little more proactive to make sure the parking laws are respected. That's it. Other than that, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it's not too bad a plan, but we have to consider the shortcomings of the street. Excuse me, sir. Are you suggesting that? I understand that that maybe more parking should be required off street because of the difficulties on street parking bring. You've mentioned some of them. We all um, know that. We've been going through it for years. I'm I'm with Tom. You know, I've been looking out, and there's been nobody parked on the street in in the evenings. And I'm not home during the day, so it's not a concern. I think I can tell you that there's three nights a year maybe when the synagogue will fill the street from Blades down to Garden Street. Um, but that's three nights out of the year. Um, if, you know, if he has a room and they utilize it, as he said, it may not be an issue other than getting the turns in and out during a busy period can be difficult. Right. Because I, I just know sometimes I have troubles getting out, um, especially if the cars are parked in to where they're at either edge of the driveway and you don't have a, a field of view to get out. So I, th I think that was more long term. If you let every, everybody who wants a business kind of seep into the street, then we're going to have a bigger and bigger problem. But I, I lived through the days of the Red Barn and the dance studio, and parking has never been as bad as that it was about 20 years ago, I guess. But <laughs> so, but I, I just want to point out that the street is narrow, as you brought up, and um, people do like to park, and they're going to take the path of least resistance. And if it's closer from the street to their door, that's where they're going to park. Right. So. That, those were my comments. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm Norm Cavoli from Zero Center Street, and I plan <laughs> don't laugh here. Uh, and I plan on building that's a house it. there, and that's the. Uh, I agree with all the congestion potential at Main Street, and in the parking lot. So the obvious. Yeah, yeah. Place for cars to park would come up Center Street, and right in front of my house would be the available parking because you can't park near Blaze from the corner. So I do expect cars park more traffic in front of my house. With that said, though, I would still like the project approved. I think it's well worth it. Any traffic problems I could work out, I'm sure, with Tom and company. Thank you. Thank you. Zero Center Street. Anybody else? I'm Howard Willard, 141 Main Street. Uh, I'm right across the street from Tom and Julie. And uh, as a preservationist and an architectural historian, he saved the Grange Hall, so I thought that was good. Um, when it comes to, um, my neighbor pointed out the fact that it is a mixed use zone and I would say that um, right now there are people living in almost all of those structures. Um, I do, I live in my home, I rent out my barn for, as office use and right now there's a realtor in there and they come in the morning when he opens 
and park and go in and talk with, excuse me, and talk with each other, and then they drive off and sell houses. So, um, but um, I, I never know when the lease is up whether people are going to stay, and, and we might have some other kind of offices in there. Um, but as a mixed use zone, most of the structures in the neighborhood are still residential homes first, and businesses are secondary uses. When my wife and I moved in back in 1959, we were the youngest people in the neighborhood. Most of the others were retired. Within two or three years, there were young children on both sides of the street, including ours. Those kids are grown up now, and the cycle is about to repeat itself. My granddaughter will inherit our home as the fourth generation of our family to live here. This part of Main Street has historic structures on both sides, so it is an important part of the historic district. Tom and Julie and family have been good neighbors and a pleasure to know. We were there the first evening when they applied to do what they have now, and, and uh, they came before the town because we knew, uh, well, we went to that meeting because we knew that a restaurant across the street would be a big problem because a building that size with eating in would be, uh, if you think there's a traffic problem now, that would really be a traffic problem. Um, but um, they reassured us when they explained that they were caterers and planned to live upstairs and use the downstairs as their kitchen for food preparation and then transport it to the location of the party. That is what they've been doing and it has worked out well. After reading Tom's letter, and Tom did write a letter to the town, um, and I went up today and I got a copy of that letter, and I didn't know whether uh, Tom might like to read that because I learned a lot from reading his letter. After reading Tom's letter to the Planning and Zoning Commission, I think we can trust him to solve any problems that might arise, and I heard another neighbor say that too. Um, it, right now, um, I, I, I think we may be taking a, um, the view of the on-street parking. We're very jealous of our on-street parking down there um, because most of us don't have lots big enough or have access to off-street parking. Um, I live on less than a quarter of an acre and I have my home and my barn there. And um, so I put in a brick driveway and, a, and brick parking areas. Uh, it's all antique brick in there. And um, so most of the people who work in our barn park in our parking area, but with a real estate office, sometimes there are more people who, as I say, come in in the morning and, and park on the street. But probably by lunchtime and dinner time, uh, I think that they, I doubt that they would be there. Um, but um, there's no question that, um, I, l let me say I'm pro street lights. Um, and I like the, although I like the old street lights that we've installed. And um, I thought it would, would have been nicer if they took those all the way to Garden Street, which is only maybe at most a half a dozen houses. Uh, I think they stop in front of the Ford's house, which is on the corner of Center and, and Main. And uh, I have to say, I was a little bit jealous when Charlie got a street light and we didn't. Um, I, th I, think but, he was um, on, I think he was on the committee, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he was. Um, anyway, so um, I, I was um, a little bit leery when I first heard about this, but uh, I've talked with Tom and I read the note that he sent to the town. And um, I'm, as I said, uh, I'm willing, he's been a very good neighbor, and I think if anything comes up that the neighbors don't like, uh, that Tom would be willing to work with them. And um, uh, 
I guess unless you have any questions, I'm done. I think it would be great if we could get a taller. <laughs> um, that's, uh, that's, I used to sit out there in the audience, and you can't see from where you are, but I wear hearing aids. And I noticed that my friend George Oikel doesn't use his. And um, I had to listen very carefully to hear George when he talked. But um, as long as we've paid for them, I'd appreciate it if you'd use them. OK, thank you. Thanks for reminding him of that. Yeah, yeah. He's been reminded before. <laughs> thank you. Anybody else? How are you? Antonio Lenoci, 146 Main Street. Um, we're for it. Um, everybody in the business district, it's tough with the parking, but we've got to make do with what we have. And uh, that's pretty much it. I hope you're, it goes through. You're next door, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Any issues? I see you're putting new sod in today. Yes, sir. <laughs> you put that in on Sunday. Man. Yep. Good. we got to get the CEO. The boss wants to get in there, and we got to get it done. So, I mean, the parking is just from all the way from my father's building all the way to this end. That's all we hear is parking, parking, parking. But what are we going to do? I told the neighbor, we all have businesses. We all have to work together. And it is what it is. He's trying to make a living. Everyone else is trying to make a living. I know it's people live there, too. I mean, I mean, it is. What are we going to do? The town allowed businesses to go in. Maybe the town should take some of the houses out that are in the district. Yeah. Am I right or am I wrong? Because if we can't oh. accommodate the parking, we shouldn't have the houses there. You're heretic. Right? I mean, it would be... Cancel the feed. No, I mean, it is. It's true, though, because you, we don't have enough parking to accommodate these houses, so then we shouldn't have the houses. Do you, do you, do you agree that there's... Created what? The truth? Parking on the street, but there is also parking down, the public parking Yeah, down. but... I, and people are so all, lazy they empty. can't I even drove in and I did it two cars in that parking the people are so lazy do you think they're gonna they walk they don't yeah. walk 2200 feet and that they say we're what they walk down there. they walk yeah but you know what the answer is maybe what? the older people not parking the young meters parking meters. Or, <laughs> what about part, uh, spray painting the lines in the road <laughs> or like what Starford does get revenue from it Paint the lines in front of all the streets, so then you have designated spots. Because when they have lights now, overhead tolls. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Get Tony Guerrero to come. He's right down the street, anyways. <laughs> all right. well, thank you. No, I am. I am for it. I am for it. Thank. You. Question. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get the guy a mic. <laughs> yes. Well, he wants to sell his house. Yeah, we're not going to tear down your house. Well, the comment I'm going to make is Main Street's been zoned a lot of it business. We're still part of the historic district. Is that not correct? Which takes precedent? Because every house that you want for a parking lot is well over 200 years old. Right. And that is, um, are we historic first or business first? And that's going to be a, a tough battle and probably has been anyhow. Historic first. Okay. Um, I hate to say it, we lost a historic building. Um, <laughs> because you know what you found when you went inside, there was no saving it, right? But um, yeah, no, I know, I, I did see some of it. So, but, so the parkings, maybe the answer is to limit the business and to be more serious about whether we should have expanded the district down to Garden Street. There's the, that's um, what I'm talking about. Yeah, one way or the other, you gotta right. make a choice. Right. So, but if we're his, right. I mean, do you blame them listening to this over and over and over again from Hartford Avenue all the way to your shop? Sure. I, mean, I got businesses on the other end too that I got to accommodate that have four rental places over there. But it was only. My father's going to put a restaurant over there. And then we're going to hear no parking, no parking, no parking. But if there's no parking and you're impacting the rest of the area and all the other owners, right. that's an issue. Right. And then you have to make a decision. Right. Maybe the businesses belong on the Silas Dean. Maybe that, that's what should happen unless it's a small craft shop right. with, and that only brings one or two people in an hour, right? But anyhow, that was my comment, was just that we're a historic district. And we, around Tom and Julie, and they're in a historic building too, we have a lot of old houses, some, one of the better clusters of them in, in the village. So um, they really should be looked out for first. That's it. Thanks. Thanks. Any other? 
Public discussion? Public input? All righty. Um, if the applicant could, <laughs> where's the applicant? <laughs> That's a long. You didn't run away, right? Um, <clears throat> are there additional questions for the applicant? Uh, what's uh, still a little loose in my mind is there's a proposal about parking on the site. Um, I, I guess my, my own impression is I guess we might as well make room for the six. Let's try and clean it up so that the line striping, you'll have to work with town staff to, to work with something. Uh, I tend to believe that if your customers don't like coming out a 12 and a half foot driveway, they won't do it a second time. Um, and they'll be on the street. But then at least you can park back there, I guess, you know, that kind of thing, and, mm -hmm. and leave a spot open at the uh, community center. Not the community <laughs> center, the uh, um, Keen other Keen 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 center. Keeney Center. Fire yeah. Department. George. Uh, you didn't, up to the building, that is the front part mm -hmm. of the driveway. You know, I got a Have picture. I've got a picture, of George. It? Hold on a second. I got a picture of this thing. Okay. Have you ever thought of widening it? The, the what? The driveway? The front part of the driveway. Yeah, up to the building. And so that, you know, you, you could pass the two cars up front. Well, least. the problem with widening it is because we have a water, the, the water main is, you know, comes in on oh, yeah. that one side there, so we right, couldn't I do it. Up front there. And uh, yeah. so that posed a problem. This is a picture of the, uh, that's the doorway that you want to see the door, because I know we're just having trouble figuring the side door there. Yeah, so we, we, we would have loved to have it wider, but you know, we had to keep, we had the house close by on the one side, and then we had the water meter on the, or the water thing on the other side. And yeah, I mean, if we were really serious about it, we'd tell them to cut down the tree and make a circular loop driveway and have a drive up window, but I think this is a good solution. You're giving me some ideas now. <laughs> that would be. Now, we love those trees. We don't want to take those trees yeah, down. All right. Additional questions for the applicant before we? It's, I'm just asking a question. Um, since it is a business you? and you haven't told us your hours, you're putting an ADA accessible sidewalk surface. Will you have the proper lighting from the curb to the entrance way? I mean, well, if we plan on, yeah, we're going to propose that, but we have to go in front of the historic commission, I think, for a lot of that because we're going to have to have signage pointing towards that way and we're going to have some lighting. And there's some other things we want to go for too. Uh, as far as uh, overhang and stuff for protecting okay. people so coming in and out. I mean, that's, yeah, 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 it's all good. Yeah. His hours are in the letter. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, it says 10 to 7, but I really don't want to work till 7, so I mean, it'd probably be 6 o'clock or something. One quick yeah. question, Mr. Chairman. George. Are you going to, nothing to do with it exactly with the application you're going to redo the front of the building in any way historic well, i'd love to yeah now that i've got it's antonio it's next door i gotta do something up, now you know not updating old dating right yeah oh, yeah we're going to keep it uh, i'm going to keep the same shingles i'm not you know believe me i've been through this already right yeah. <laughs> i spent a lot of money on those windows I'm tell sure you that much did. yeah it's a lot of money the roof Lucky to be standing here right now with all the money I spent on this place. All right, so this, this is a public hearing. Is there any additional questions for the applicant? Or sh do I hear a motion to deal with the hearing? Motion to close the hearing. Second. Thank you very much. Any comment? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, would anybody like to present a motion? Pose a motion. Uh, make a motion we approve application 1944-17-Z um, as submitted with the stipulation that um, they address any of the uh, town engineer's comments from May 2nd that may still be outstanding. Why do I think there was one other? That's, I guess that's it. Okay. Second. <laughs> All right, Tony. Any, any any further discussion on the matter? Everybody's just comfortable with it. We had a pretty lengthy discussion on it. Yeah, exactly. My my um, one of my concerns, uh, what I was thinking was that right now, the way the the, the business is situated is that it's not a restaurant, it's not an eat-in, it's 
coming in, picking up. There, there's, it's just more flexibility. You can either have your, your um, you can either be catered or you could pick up your food. But if, let's say, 10 years down the road, someone would like to have an eat-in place, which is like a whole different situation with parking, accessibility and everything, is that the kind of thing that we should put in as a stipulation now that it should be revisited before the board? Or is that already part of our zoning regulations that it would have to be? We have different categories for restaurants. Takeout is, is separate from a sit down. So uh, if they were to be interested in adding seats or doing something differently that would change it, uh, they'd have to come back. It'd be an automatic. Yes. <clears throat> okay, that was my only reservation. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, any concerns? All right, all those in favor say aye. Hi. Hi. Is there anybody opposed? Passes unanimously. Good luck. Did he stay? Oh, he's, he's talking to post. <laughs> 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 yeah. Alrighty. Uh, we'll yes. So we have minutes from March 21, and I know Tony can't comment on it. And for the record, Tony won. Yeah, Tony. Tony won. Congratulations, Tony. Well, I you, guess it was you, time, well, time well spent. <laughs> Until you find out how bad the pavement is. Yeah, I know. Time, <laughs> time well spent. Um, make a, wait. May 20. It says March 21 on the. And it says April 4th here. Yeah, there which one are we voting? Which one are these? Uh, April 4th. So, so yeah. Um, I got to think it's April 4th. Right. Make a motion. We approve the minutes of April 4th. Thank you. Oh, the agenda says March 21st, so correct yeah, that, right? It is yeah. April 4th, right? On page 12, we approved the yep. March 21st minutes. Yep, minute, so that's correct. Be, okay. Okay for April 4th. So is there a second? Second. All right, thank you. So one, two, three, four, five. Shoot. I think there's only five people. Myself, Rich. As long as it's your name, Mr. George. Brian and Dave. Brian and Dave? Yep. Oh, okay, so we got five. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. So we got five. Nice. Five voting for and the other four are? Abstaining. Abstaining? Yep. Thank you. Staff reports? Anything? No. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Public comment? Um, do you want to? Oh. Yes, you're, you're here for the other thing. So let's do that under public comment, right? Yeah. Why don't you come join us? Other business. Other business. Mm -hmm. or other yeah. Either way. Come on up. Introduce yourself, and what would you like from us? Sure. Uh, Tim Mandurko, professional engineer with Langan Engineering, uh, representing uh, Tanesh Patel on application 1941-17-Z. Um, we uh, are working through staff comments, and. Uh, have a client who has some obligation under their lease to try and move some action on this application prior to June 1. Um, I know your next regularly scheduled meeting is until June 6. It's a rather large ask, but my client uh, wanted us to come tonight and ask if there was any possibility of a meeting prior to your June 6 regularly scheduled meeting to try and hear this application. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, I was getting clarification. The next, our next meeting is, in fact, two weeks from now on the 16th. Oh, we, I'm sorry, I was looking at your, your schedule. All right. And the, the <laughs> issue with uh, the 16th is revised materials would need to be in this Friday, and uh, we received comments today. We have a meeting with Mr. Gillespie scheduled for Thursday. So the issue from our end would be buttoning up everything in, in two days or three business days to get that material in and, and back before you on the 16th. Okay. So, um, so I read the correspondence. So you're hoping that we will uh, arrange a separate meeting um, on Memorial Day? On Memor uh, yeah, right? A separate meeting? On what day? Uh, I didn't have a date. Be just I, between I the, the meeting of the 15? 16th and the meeting on June 6th. And I completely understand the, uh, the significance of the ask and 
can understand the direction of the commission if that's not possible. You're, you're anxious to move that fast? Uh, I, I'm not. My uh, hmm. <laughs> my client is. Uh, they have an obligation under their lease to uh, have action on the application prior to June 1 as part of their lease negotiation with their tenant. I hear um, you. But I, I, I'm well aware that you've been having discussions with design review for the last three or four, seems like two or three months. Correct. Uh, more than once, that is. And uh, so I didn't know how fast you were trying to go because... <laughs> Not that they try to hold you up, but uh, understood. You know, you you but tried to get the right thing there, and uh, that's good. I'm not aware of all the detail, but I, I heard that. So, but you really need it by June first. Uh, if, if it's <laughs> physically possible, um, but again, we understand the significance of the ask. So, since you're smiling as I say, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to be the hard backside. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm a volunteer, um, uh, you know. Understood. Coming every other week is enough for me. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't not get ready on time, <laughs> right? So I'm not inclined to set up a special meeting personally. I don't know how you guys feel. We, okay. we normally, Mr. Chairman, haven't scheduled except in real crisis of some sort. Uh, maybe it's a crisis for him because he has there's a, there's a saying about that, you know, you know, something along the lines of, you know, your lack of planning doesn't make it a crisis on my part. Shortly after that, right? When is the it's June June meeting? Six. June six. June six. Right. Too late for right. Okay, Does I, anybody feel otherwise? Well, can I just ask a question? So, I'm I'm trying to understand the conundrum. So, sure. so is it that you there's a meet you're having a meeting with the town. Correct. You're getting, you, you, you're getting comments back Correct. this week. Correct. Thursday. Yes. And, the, and you're required to sub, prepare the submission? Ten days prior to the next hearing date. So for the May 16th meeting, we would have to submit May 6th, which is this Friday. Okay. And, and, uh, again, and again, and I understand this is not, three, not your problem. Probably three, <laughs> it's probably three weeks later. Right, there's probably yep. two and a half to three weeks because yeah. it's the, the second one. So right. they'd prefer not to wait three additional weeks after that. That's what it boils down to. Is that 10 days? Is there any waivable? I mean, if it's it, a Monday or something? It's, or the, it's it, the, I mean, I. Is that right. a legal thing? Right. Or is that? No, it's a town engineer review, turnaround schedule type of thing. So, um, yeah, it, it is what it is. I mean, he needs, uh, and, and to be quite honest, the comments were pretty substantial. Whether oh, you could even okay. meet right. the uh, is still debatable. So I, I think even if we did agree, we may be agreeing for no reason because because mm -hmm. eight days may not be workable either, right? Yeah. So point. Yeah. and we have on occasion we tend to approve the same night they're heard, but we don't always. Understood. Yeah. So yeah. we may have a hang up on something or another. It's possible, yes. Especially if there's a lot of comments. Mm -hmm. All right. So, no. unless I'm hearing, you know, five or six people are going to be here on a certain night and provide a quorum, I'm afraid your answer is no. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you for waiting longer. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, is there anything else to discuss here, Peter? Unless the zoning officer who is heading to the back has anything else to offer. <laughs> He seems done. No, he's shutting down. That would, be, that would be no. Okay. I, th I think we need an update on all those chicken coming from me. I didn't see nearly as many chickens in the last one. In the last one, I didn't see nearly as many chickens. The fad's over, I think. Pretty good. The chicken menace is gone. Scourge. All right. Motion, please. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Do we, need, do we care who seconds? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night.